So now let's go over and identify the tension members. And Jennifer, you do that by clicking on the tension side and arrange those in descending order just by clicking on the heading. Does everybody see that? That's good. Now, once again, I can drop over to the compression side and ease down to the last one that shows a zero. That would be member number eight. Every member from there up is a tension member. So what do you think the next step in the process would be? Absolutely. We would optimize each one to get those performance ratios up. So jump up to member 15. We'll do this just one. Size it appropriately, Jen. Take it down to about 55. Now there's a tension failure that also caused a compression failure. Remember, it's a truss. These members work together, right? What we'll do is we'll ignore the compression failure at the moment and adjust the tension member. That's what we're working on. So, Jennifer, we're back in business. Once again, note the cost. We're gaining on the cost. Every, every, we've, just, we've just saved $20,000 with just the nominal work we've done. You do see that we have a performance ratio of exactly 1.00. Sometimes the software will fail a member at 1.00. That's basically in the rounding. The, the software uses two digits. If you get 0.99 and it's 0.995, it's probably going to fail you. If it's 0.994 or something like that, you're probably good. But the software rounds that a little funny. Go ahead and do the next one. Uh, pick a top cord member. Top cord. Just click there. Number 27. That's a compression member. Let's use a bottom cord. So we're at, we're at member number four. Also, take that member down to about 55, Jen. Once again, we have a failure. So size it up properly. Just the member that you worked on. You see, it caused other failures because these compression members and the tension members work together. Okay, go back and find us a pure tension member. Select member 29. Size it up one. Run the load test. All right, go back over and click on the tension heading. Click it again. All right, pick that number 18. That'll be fine. Take it down to 55. Take it, take it as low as we can go. Make it as small as possible. Take it on down to 30. You see a different color pop up? Everybody see a different color pop up? That tells us we have violated a code. We have violated the slenderness ratio. What that means is, is that that member probably could take the load. It probably could take the load. This particular member couldn't take the load, but it probably it, but it won't take it for the cycles that the code requires it. So it would take it for a while. Over time, that, that member would fail for that violation in the slenderness code. You cannot submit a successful design with a slenderness code violation, whether the load passes or not. It'll kick it back out and won't accept it. So move that member back up to 100 or so. All right, we're, we have a successful design again. We've saved about $22,000 from our original design. We're ready to go. We're, we're still optimizing. That's only part of the story. Let's go back to our imagination. 